Kristen here with another Roll20 tutorial. In this video, I'll be talking about the ins and outs of adding and manipulating images within Roll20 by recreating this coastal scene. Most of the images I'll be using today are from several marketplace art assets by artist Saul Wynn. If you got an itch for some naval conquest for your own tabletop game, I have links to all three sets listed in the info tab below. For starters, let's cover general page locomotion. You can specify the magnification level of the page by clicking on the magnifying glass icon on the tabletop toolbox. There are scroll bars on the bottom and to the right of the tabletop to move your viewpoint around, but you can also pan by moving your mouse with the right button held down. If your mouse has scroll buttons, you can utilize these as well to move about the tabletop. If you click and hold the left mouse button down on the tabletop, a circle will radiate out from your cursor. We call this a ping. They're useful for pointing things out on the tabletop since everyone is able to see each other's pings. If the GM holds down the shift key while pinging, it will move everyone's view to center on that ping. This can come in handy if your players load up a very big map and need to find where their tokens are. Now we have that out of the way, let's create a blank page for our recreation. I do this by clicking on the page icon at the top of the screen to pull down the page toolbar. I'm going to click on the Create New Page button to add a blank page to the far right of our page list. We'll add a unique name for it. Hit the Return key to accept the name change. Clicking on the gear icon to the left of this page will bring up its page settings. We're going to leave it at the default 25 units by 25 units dimensions, you'll see why shortly, and keep the square grid on. Just click on the page to load it up. The first thing I'm going to grab is the big beach image. There's a particular image of winds that I'd like to use. To get it, I need to find it in Roll20's art library search. To do this, we go to the sidebar and click on the picture frame icon for the art library tab. I'm greeted with an image search field. There's a drop down menu that can narrow your search to tokens, maps, tiles, and textures, portraits, or everything. The star icon to the right of the drop-down menu will bring up a user's personal art library, which I will go back to later on in this tutorial. For right now, I'm going to set my search parameters to everything and put the keywords win and see into the search field. If there's anything that fits your keyword search in your personal art library, that gets listed first, followed by marketplace content, and lastly images found from the web. I'm going to be pulling this Beach North graphic for the tabletop's backdrop. To place it on the tabletop, just select it from the search and drag it over. You can move the image by clicking anywhere inside and dragging it to where you want it to be placed. After an image is selected, a couple transformation gizmos will appear around an image. The gizmo on the image's edge is for scaling. I can horizontally, vertically, and uniformly scale an image by clicking and dragging on specific gizmo nodes. There's also a handle that sticks out from the top of the image. This is the rotation gizmo. Click and drag the handle to rotate the image. If at any point you've made a mistake while decorating your tabletop, you can undo the last move by hitting Ctrl or Command Z. As you probably have already noticed, movement, rotation, and scaling are snapping to the grid. This happens by default if a square or hex grid is enabled for the current page. You can avoid this by either temporarily disabling the grid in the page settings, or by holding down the Alt key while you transform your images. If I wanted to, I could manually scale out this image to fit the extents of the page, but I'd like to set this image to its original dimensions. This can be done via the Images Options menu. Right-click on the image to bring this menu up, go to Advanced, and then click on Set Dimensions. This will bring up a window where I can set either the exact pixel width or height, or set the number of units the image should take up. I know that this image is exactly 25 by 25 units, so I will input this and click Set. Now I have the image scaled exactly to the size I want, and I will snap this into place. Now let's add the two islands. Now, you're probably asking me, Kristen, I don't see them on the tabletop. Did the drag and drop not work? 
Actually, yes, they are there. They just so happen to be underneath the big beach image. See, I had the beach image currently selected, so when I dragged new images to the tabletop, Roll20 assumed I wanted them underneath the object I currently have selected. Images on the tabletop are like a stack of paper in an office inbox. We call this Z-layering. Anytime you add a new image to the tabletop, it's added to the order of the stack. Presently, the beach image is at the top of the stack. We can move images up and down the stack by going back to the right-click options menu. Since we want to put the beach at the very bottom, we want to choose the options to back, which reveals our two island images. Now we'll add the rock images. Roll20 has the ability to flip or mirror an image horizontally and vertically. You do this by bringing up the options menu again, click on advanced, then either select flip horizontal or flip vertical. This rock image is actually duplicated as well on this page. To copy and paste an image, first select it and hit Control or Command C to copy it. Then click somewhere on the tabletop where you'd like to paste the duplicate. Roll20 will remember this location. Next, hit Control or Command V to paste a duplicate in the location you indicated. Now I'm going to add the palm trees. Say later on I want to move this pair of palm tree images to another location. I could click each image and move them over individually, or I can group the images together so I can move them both at once. To group a series of images, you first select the first image in the group, and then while holding Shift down, select the rest of the images you want in the group. When they're all selected, right-click in the middle of the selection to go to the Options menu and click on Advanced, and then select Group. Now you'll be able to move the group around as well as copy and paste new groups to the tabletop. If you need to manipulate a single image in a group, hold down the Alt key and click on the image you wish to alter. This will bring up that image's transformation gizmos and will allow you to play around with just that image. Clicking outside the group will close the group back up again. To separate a group, you go through the same process of creating one, only you select Ungroup in the Options menu. There may be times that you'll want to use your own art or use graphics provided by a game module. In this instance, I'd like to add an X on my map that marks the spot for treasure. I created an image for it outside of Roll20 using a paint program. To add this image to my campaign, I can just drag the image from my file folder and drop it onto the tabletop. This action will upload the image to my personal Roll20 image library. Roll20 can utilize JPEG, GIF, and PNG image files. If you're dragging them to the tabletop, you can only upload one image at a time, and there's a 5 megabyte cap for file uploads. If you have a batch of images that you'd like to add to your library, you can upload up to 10 images at a time directly from your Art Library Manager. Go to the Art Library tab and click on the star icon beside the search field. This will bring up a window that displays your personal image library. Go to the Upload tab. You can either drag up to 10 image files into the designated upload section, or you can select them via a traditional file search. Your batch upload still has to fall under the 5 megabyte cap in order for this to process correctly. A user's allotted server space depends on whether they have a basic, supporter, or mentor account. You can keep track of your storage quota by checking your account details on the Roll20 website. You can delete images from your library by clicking on the trash can icon. Important note, if you delete uploaded images from your library, this will remove the image from any and all campaigns that are currently using it. You can't actually drag images from this library to the tabletop you have to pull them up from a regular search. To make this process easier, you can add keyword tags to an image. 
You can add as many tags as you want to help keep your library organized. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Check out our YouTube channel for more Roll20 tutorials, and as always, you can read our help documentation over at help.roll20.net. If you have any further questions on how to use our virtual tabletop, visit the official Roll20 forums. Happy gaming!